Welcome to today's video lesson on understanding information disorder and the soapstone method. In this lesson, we will explore the concept of information disorder, its various types, and how we can use the soapstone method to determine the accuracy and truthfulness of the material we encounter. So let's dive in. Information disorder refers to the spread of false or misleading information, often facilitated by digital technologies and social media platforms. It can have significant consequences on individuals, communities, and societies. Let's now explore the seven types of information disorder. The first type is misleading content. Misleading content involves the presentation of information that is partially true or has been manipulated to give a false impression. It aims to distort the facts or misrepresent the overall narrative, leading to the audience to draw incorrect conclusions. Imagine encountering an article online with a headline that reads, New study claims chocolate causes weight loss. However, upon reading the article, you discover that the study was conducted on a small sample size and only under specific circumstances, making the result unreliable. The misleading content of the headline creates a false impression that chocolate universally leads to weight loss, while the actual study does not support such a broad claim. The second type is satire or parody. Satirical or parody content is not intended to deceive but can be misinterpreted as factual information. It uses exaggeration or irony to make a point. However, if taken out of context, it can contribute to misinformation. Imagine reading a satirical article that humorously claims a local town elected a cat as its mayor. While it is meant to be entertaining, right? If someone shares it without recognizing its satirical nature, it can contribute to misinformation. The third type is fabricated content. Fabricated content refers to completely false information created with the intent to deceive. It can be made up stories, quotes, images, or videos aimed at attracting attention or driving a specific narrative. An example of fabricated content is when a completely false news article circulates, claiming that a famous celebrity has passed away, causing widespread rumors and misinformation about their death. The fourth type is false context. False context involves presenting genuine information or content in a misleading or deceptive manner. It distorts the meaning or presents it out of context to manipulate the audience's perception or understanding. Let's give an example. Let's say there's a photo circulating on social media showing a crowded street with people holding protest signs. However, the photo is actually from a completely unrelated event that took place several years ago. By sharing it in the current context, the photo misleads viewers about the nature and purpose of the protest. The fifth type is manipulated content. Manipulated content involves the alteration or editing or modification of genuine information, such as images, videos, or text, with the intent to deceive or mislead. It can be achieved through the use of digital editing tools or deep fake technology. Imagine coming across a viral image on social media showing a politician participating in a controversial event. However, upon closer examination, it is revealed that the image has been digitally manipulated to create a false narrative and damage the politician's reputation. 
this manipulated content can spread rapidly and contribute to misinformation. The sixth type is false connection. False connection involves linking unrelated events, individuals, or information to create a misleading or false narrative. It aims to deceive the audience by suggesting a connection where none exists. Imagine coming across a social media post claiming that a popular celebrity endorses a particular product or supports a controversial political agenda. However, upon closer investigation, it is revealed that there is no actual connection between the celebrity and the product or the political cause. This false connection misleads the audience and can contribute to the spread of misinformation. The seventh and final type of information disorder is imposter content. Imposter content involves the impersonation of genuine sources, brands, or individuals. It can include fake social media accounts, websites, or email addresses that mimic legitimate ones. Let's have an example. Imagine someone creates a fake social media account using the name and profile picture of a well-known public figure. They use this account to spread false information and interact with the person's followers, misleading them into believing that they are interacting with the genuine individual. Now that we have explored the types of information disorder, let's move on to the soapstone method, which is a valuable tool for evaluating the accuracy and truthfulness of the material we encounter. The soapstone method stands for speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, subject, tone, and style. Let's briefly discuss each element. The speaker refers to the person or entity delivering the text. Understanding the speaker's background, expertise, biases, and purpose helps us assess their credibility and consider how these factors may influence the message. Occasion refers to the context or setting in which the text was created or delivered. Consider the time, place, and reason for the text's existence, such as a political rally, a conference, or a response to a specific event or issue. Audience refers to the intended recipients or readers of the text, analyzing the characteristics of the target audience, their knowledge, beliefs, values, and potential reactions helps us evaluate the effectiveness of the text's content and tone. Purpose refers to the reason behind the creation of the text, identifying the speaker's goals, whether it is to inform, persuade, entertain, or provoke, helps us interpret the text's main argument or message. The subject is the main topic or theme of the text. Understanding what the text is about, the issues it addresses, or the arguments it presents helps us grasp the overall focus and content. Tone refers to the attitude or emotion conveyed by the speaker towards the subject and the audience. Analyzing the language, style, and rhetorical devices used in the text helps us assess the speaker's tone and its impact on the audience perception. Finally, style. It encompasses the choices made by the speaker regarding language, structure, and rhetorical devices. Analyzing the use of figurative language appeals to logic or emotion, sentence structure, and overall writing techniques helps us understand how the speaker conveys their message. Now that we understand the soapstone method, let's apply it to a practical example to determine the accuracy and truthfulness of a material viewed. Let's take a news article as an example and apply the soapstone method to assess its accuracy and truthfulness. 
The speaker of this news article is a reputable environmental scientist with expertise in marine biology. The occasion is a scientific conference where the latest research on climate change impact on marine life was presented. The audience is the general public, including individuals interested in environmental issues and policymakers. The purpose of the article is to inform the audience about the current scientific understanding of how climate change affects marine life and to raise awareness about the importance of taking action. The subject of the article is the impact of climate change on marine ecosystems, including rising sea temperatures, ocean acidification, and changes in biodiversity. The tone of the article is informative and concerned, emphasizing the urgency of addressing climate change and its consequences on marine life. The style of of the article is objective, using scientific language and evidence-based arguments to support the claims made. By analyzing the speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, subject, tone, and style of the news article, we can conclude that it is likely to be accurate and truthful, as it is based on scientific research presented in a reputable conference. However, it's essential to note that not all sources are reliable as this example. It's crucial to apply the soapstone method and critically evaluate the elements of a text to determine its accuracy and truthfulness. In conclusion, understanding information disorder and utilizing the soapstone method are valuable tools in today's digital age. By being aware of the types of information disorder and applying critical thinking skills, we can navigate the vast amount of information available to us more effectively and make informed decisions. Remember to analyze the speaker, occasion, audience, purpose, subject, tone, and style, soapstone, of the material you encounter to assess its accuracy and truthfulness. This will help you become a more discerning consumer of information. Thank you for joining this video lesson on understanding information disorder and the soapstone method. I hope you find it insightful and empowering. See you next time!